call it spring like everything the sun for flowers calling on one day is over to you but i call call like everything I think the next thing to get into would be kind of health versus sport. Health versus sport versus, I would say, aesthetic as well. Um, I think that's like the third category there, right? You're either training for one of the three. Um, I would say like 99% of the population isn't training for sport ever. Wait, so you feel like there's like, like so, people either train for aesthetics, they train for health, or they train to like perform better, aka sport. Yeah, okay. a thousand percent, right? Um, I would say I would like group bodybuilding into that category. Yeah. Um, not that there's anything wrong if you are bodybuilding, but you're just probably not very ready for life um, as far as like a, being a general physical like preparedness kind yeah, of like, thing. What does that mean? Like, what do you um, like? What's a good example of that? Like just because you can bench press and squat uh, doesn't mean you can do it together or kind of do really anything. The ability to go in many different directions with your fitness is the cool part, right? Um, being able to, like we said, at any point in time, kind of scale up or scale down um, is, is the thing of beauty, right? Um, and when we are training for health, our aesthetics kind of fall into place. Right? When we're training for aesthetics, our health really doesn't fall into place. I think I think we can keep going back and forth with that, right? Uh, if we if we're training for health, everything else kind of does what it needs to to do. No, I think uh, that's important to like. I don't think that's anything to brush by because there's a lot of people that like go. They think that because when they see somebody with a six pack, that automatically means that they are like fit and they are healthy and that's not always the case not at all i mean if you ask somebody to run around the block and they're really out of breath that's probably not a good thing right yeah. just because they have a six pack doesn't mean that they're fit yeah. um and then the training for sport thing i think that's really important when we're talking about like what is crossfit right because if we ask a lot of people what is crossfit that aren't already part of a crossfit gym they would say what they see on espn is crossfit right um and crossfit for sport crossfit for health are two different things right CrossFit for Sport is a group of people, and I would even group them in as athletes, um, that are working out for a living, right? These people don't have nine to fives. Um, they are sleeping 10 hours a night. They are eating perfectly, um, and they are making a, a salary, a living working out. Um, and unless you check all of those boxes, you will kind of fall into the health category, right? Um, which again is like 99.9% .9 of the people uh, that do CrossFit, right? Um, I would say in Delaware, it's almost every single person that does CrossFit, right? There might be a total of like five people that train CrossFit for sport in the state of Delaware alone. Um, and in the Trice area, it's probably less than 20, right? So we're really not looking at a lot. Most gyms are, are made up of, of people that just kind of want to live a healthier, and happier, and longer life. Um, it's kind of, kind of just finding your group of people that you want to do that with, right? Um, that's that's the one thing I would say is, is don't get grouped into thinking CrossFit is what you see on TV uh, because the best athlete in the CrossFit gym that you go to can't do half the things that those people can do. Um, and it's just something that is, is so outlandish that it's hard for us to kind of uh, comprehend when you're looking at it from the inside out, but from the outside in, that that's all you see and that's all you know, um, I would say uh, just walk into a gym and kind of look around and see what the people look like and it would be it would be blown, it would blow you away um, because it's people from the ages of, of 10 to 80 and usually they don't look anything like the people you're seeing on TV. I spent like four years going like and trying to work up by myself and I think like I just, I barely changed. Like I think there was just, I again, I just barely changed um, and it you just realize it doesn't have to be that way and you said something earlier like when I was like, I was like, well, like we should really talk about the cost and you know, it's like a point that people were making and we brushed on it earlier, but I love that you were like, it's what, $5 a day. It's like, yeah. you know, and like I, I'm a coffee fiend and I spend sometimes like $10, $11 on coffee a day. Um, so I don't know. It's just, it's a matter of priorities and I'm checking my privilege there that like, yes, I, I can afford a monthly membership and I totally get that, you know, some people it just seems not doable. But I think when we go back to the conversation of like nutrition and fitness in general, 
like we always ask people like well when you look at your bank statement and you see you know like you order takeout this night or you went out to dinner this night or you bought coffee like you really do see where your priorities lie um you know whether you're going to the bar and things like that and when you add that total up of different extra things that you that aren't supporting your health and fitness you add them up and you're you're basically also saving money i mean i i've spent oh well over 150 dollars in a weekend of food and drinks at yeah. anything you know yeah um i think that um the one thing that would shock people is like that's not what the people and like the people in, in a gym are going out and having drinks and they are going out to dinner um but what you notice is they understand how to kind of balance that out and, and what that looks like right it's not an every weekend thing and it's not an every Thursday, Friday, Saturday thing, and they still go out and have a great time with friends and they have some drinks and, and they're happy about it because they know once they get back to whatever day they want to go back to the gym and eat healthy, they know exactly how to do it and they know exactly where to go. Um, and I think that that is, is almost priceless, right? Um, from a, a pricing standpoint in the gym, um, it's really hard to kind of um, justify with people um, that are spending money out at the bar or they are spending money out to eat um, because all this stuff would just so positively benefit what you're doing, right? Most of the time you're going out to the bar uh, to socialize, right? Um, it would be way easier to socialize with people that are kind of into the same things you are. And if, if, a, if a lifestyle change is what you're looking for, I promise you, you're not gonna find it with people at the bar. Um, so I would just say kind of check your surroundings and really look deep down into the people that you surround yourself with if you do want to make a change. And I think that if you're not ready to do that, a CrossFit gym price probably isn't for you. Um, but if you do want to make the change, you do want to do that stuff, um, you'll slowly realize that that stuff becomes less and less a part of your life. Um, and you're more so caring about uh, what your meals look like day to day and how you feel when you wake up and when you go to sleep. And um, just the little things start to become a little bit more important for you as opposed to just going out every Friday, Saturday. Yeah, I think like, there's it's all encompassing of like you know what do you want your environment to be whether that's now whether it's tomorrow next week a year from now 10 years from now 20 years from now and like when i picture my life like it's being married to somebody that cares about their body what they put into it how they treat it um and that goes right into like i want a partner that is going to be able to play with our future kids and our future grandkids and not you know not be out of shape when they run and play. And you know, I wanna be able to just have a life like that. I just, I don't wanna struggle. And I also don't want to live a life in the future where my future kids are taking care of me. You know, like I feel like we all see that and it just feels very normal when it doesn't have to be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I think on top of like the environment conversation, like I, as a like woman at least, like I don't really know how men really see their environments in other gyms but like for me it was always like the push to do like you know I always was being told like to focus on my calories burned and my heart rate and there's mirrors everywhere and there's a lot of talk about sculpting and toning and burning and like I just I've never we've visited I mean like 20 plus CrossFit gyms all over and I've never seen one mention of calories or you know it was nothing like there was no marketing scheme which is crazy about crossfit actually now that i think about it like there was never any really like marketing about weight loss like yeah ever the one thing that is really awesome um is crossfit is free on crossfit.com right but a crossfit gym costs in our in our world 165 bucks a month right um and you are paying for for that community aspect um, you're paying for coaching, you're paying for programming, um, and you're paying to um, kind of put all those three things together, right? Uh, have a place to come to that's not work at home um, and, and have that, that third bucket of somewhere you can kind of go and dump your energy for an hour a day or five hours a week or however you want to look at it. Um, and, and that is way, uh, way more valuable than really anything, right? So if you wanted to learn about CrossFit before you walked into a gym or you wanted to just kind of get a background, right? And you want to do some workouts on your own. I would say go to crossfit.com, um, read through everything, um, as much as you possibly can go back to 2002, 2003, 2004, um, and read all of the articles in the journal, um, and learn how CrossFit was meant to be kind of perceived and how it was meant to be taught before any gyms were open. Um, 
And then I would go into the local gym that you're at and, and just ask questions and hopefully their values line up with how things are supposed to be done. Um, and I feel like you'll kind of be super happy and, and on the right track, yeah. especially if this is something that you're interested in. Because um, this really could apply to people at different points in their life, right? Um, we do have members that are starting to have kids and, and maybe they don't come to the gym as much or maybe they put their membership on hold. And, and I know that it's not a long term thing, right? Because um, it's just something that might be more beneficial at a different time in your life, right? So don't force yourself into anything that you're going to regret um, and make sure that if it's not the right time that you wait until it is the right time because um, that kind of goes both ways, right? Some people would say there's never a right time, but um, if you know you have a lot of stuff going on and, and you're kind of setting yourself up for failure, make sure you have um, just one hour a day or however you want to look at it to kind of get in there at least three, four, five times a week um, and just make it happen. Why does everyone say you are going to get hurt? So that's a great one, right? Um, because injuries happen in, in all forms of fitness. I would say that most runners usually have some kind of nagging pain way more than most crossfitters in our gym. Um, that's just kind of a general statement. I had to yeah. get that out there. Um, <laughs> but funny. I would say that it, it, it gets a bad rap because people don't really know what it is, right? Uh, a lot of the times when people will say, oh yeah, I've done something like CrossFit. Right? And it's like, oh, I've done this. And it's kind of like CrossFit. I know what you're doing. And then you ask them, okay, have you ever been in a gym? No. Right? Have you ever been to a class? No. Right? So um, I think really going in and trying for yourself and going back to um, what I said in the last part, which was just asking a million questions, um, it really is your coach's job to make you safe. And again, in our gym, it's probably going to be a little while till you touch barbell, like at least six months to a year. Um, so I really wouldn't. Um, worry about that stuff until you've tried it, right? Um, so I wouldn't pass judgment on why you're gonna get hurt or why that's gonna happen. Um, I would say most injuries happen in fitness because people are doing things they shouldn't be, right? Whether you're in a global gym with some machines, you're running uh, marathons when you don't even have the proper volume to run a 5K, right? Um, and CrossFit's no different, right? If you're trying to do movements like kipping pull-ups without being able to do strict pull-ups, yeah, we'll run the risk of injury, right? If we're trying to do some dynamic Olympic lifting and we don't have an air squat down, yeah, there'll probably be some injury that could happen. Uh, but that is your coach's job to kind of scale everything down. Um, and I think that the injuries would be applied in any forms of fitness, right? Um, however you're working out or doing life, um, you run that risk if you haven't properly earned uh, the right to do it. I just like, when you were talking, I thought about this question that we got asked was, what if I can't do the movements on the board? Which is really, I love that. And I think this this still goes back to the, like every gym is different because some gyms are not really like, I mean, it's, again, it's the same wherever you go, no matter like what gym or what style, like classes or whatever, like coaches are going to treat things differently. Like, what do you think if somebody can't- Yeah, what if I can't do the movements on the board? Um, I can only speak for our gym, right? Um, for how we do things. Uh, most of the time, once you go through the general and specific warm up, um, your coach can kind of see how you're moving and what you can and can't do. Um, and we can kind of almost tell right away, right? Uh, we brief every class by saying, does anybody have any previous injuries? Does anybody have anything going on right now that they don't want to do? Is anything really sore? Do you have something coming up the next weekend? Like maybe you're running a 5K and you don't want to do any squats or something like that. Um, so there's always that in our classes. Right. Um, I think from an outsider perspective, if I was to take myself outside of our gym and running our gym every day and taking class and seeing something on the board that I couldn't do, um, I would probably just ask. Right. Um, because, again, scaling is the coach's job. Um, it's not your job as a member. Um, it is the coach's job to get everybody set up in class before he gets to go on that clock. Um, I know we have a bunch of different options in our gym, which makes it nice every day. It makes scaling really easy for the coach. Um, but most gyms will have the ability to take you and make you uh, do a workout that is appropriate for you, right? So whether that means you don't feel comfortable doing pull-ups and you get scaled down to a ring row or a jumping pull-up, right? If you don't feel comfortable doing squats and they throw you on the bike, there's always something you can be doing, right? Um, even when you're injured or even if you're coming off of an injury, there's always something that you can do in the gym, whether it's core work or just upper body or just lower body. Um, there's really no reason why you couldn't show up that day, um, which is kind of what we tell our people. Um, so back to the original question, which is what if I can't do movements on the board, I would say um, ask, right? And then second, it's just figuring out what you can do, 
talking to your coach and being communicative about that and just saying like, hey, this is what I feel comfortable doing and they should be able to kind of fit the workout into whatever you feel comfortable doing. Yeah, this also reminds me, we, um, when we travel or like do like weekend things, we like to try different gyms and it's like so, it's like one of our favorite parts of traveling. We like look up gyms in the area using like the map on crossfit.com. And like for those of you that aren't in Delaware that are watching this, that's a great way to see what gyms are close to you. I think you'll be shocked if you've never even searched CrossFit gyms nearby, even in your maps, you'll be surprised to see how many are around you. They're everywhere. Um, and when we travel, we always search for them. And like, I will never forget it. Like we went to this one gym and when you walked in, the first sign, as soon as you see it, it was like, drop the ego when you walk through the door. And I remember being like, that's kind of like harsh and like rough, but it brought me back to those times when like, I couldn't do a movement and if I had just sat there and attempted something like pull-ups I'm gonna get hurt um, and I really there's been set more times that I can count that I've had to drop my ego and say like hey my wrist has been really bothering me what should I do instead of this movement or hey like am I doing push-ups correctly like and just asking questions and I think you have to just remember that when you are taking this type of fitness journey where you're not going from, you're going from something of like just walking into a gym and guessing, like you're attempting different machines, you're just kind of copying what somebody else is doing or going on Instagram and looking up workout videos and you're going to a class setting, like be open to learning. It's actually just so fun and it's the best way to become more fit. You just learn your areas of opportunity to get better. And I just, I don't know, I just love that. And I think once I started asking questions and, you know, I had always been doing push-ups incorrectly. And then when I finally asked about like, hey, my elbow hurts when I do push-ups like this, like, am I doing something wrong? It was so cool to have a coach like get down next to me and teach me. And no one around or no one around you is thinking anything of it. They're used to being taught and yeah, I mean, you're just in a room full of people that are wanting to learn, which is just so cool. I got asked, can you be plus size slash out of shape to do CrossFit? And like, guys, we, I feel like most people have gotten to a place where like they are unhappy with their size or they have gotten somewhere, you know, out of shape wise or size. It doesn't matter because you can be extremely skinny and be out of shape, um, which is like what I was when I started CrossFit. Um, you know, like it doesn't matter about size, but the person that asks this, like, yes, absolutely. And I think there's no better place to be because everything that we just said about like, you know, you're going to learn, you're not just like walking into a room, attempting things and having all of those questions in your head. Am I doing this right? Or like, am I going to get hurt? Or am I doing enough? You know, like you don't have to question anything. You are literally showing up and passing your, you know, fitness over to your coach and just as long as you show up that's the hardest part like the hardest part is walking through the door showing up to class and just yeah i mean attending class so i think there's no better time than if you are out of shape or you are overweight plus size whatever you want to call it or if you are you know don't have any muscle you're super skinny whatever place you are there's no better time to be in that environment where you're surrounded by all different shapes, all different sizes, all different ages, all different fitness levels that are just people eager to be healthier, fitter, and wanting to learn. Yeah. A lot of the times when you talk to people out in public that aren't members of, the, of a CrossFit gym or a gym in general, it's always, oh, CrossFit's really cool, looks really awesome, I'm really interested, but I'm going to get in shape first, right? Um, I hear that all the time. It's 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 a very constant thing that you, you're hearing, oh, I'm going to get in shape, then I'm going to come see you, right? And it's like, it's really sad, right? And it's, it's more along the lines of, one, um, it's going to be really hard to do by yourself, right? Because you got out of shape by yourself um, and consistency is the easiest thing uh, to kind of mess up, right? Uh, because it's just as simple as stop working out or stop eating healthy, right? Um, if you are overweight or you are out of shape, right? Um, nutrition is the bottom of our pyramid, right? So every CrossFit gym should be able to give you like a, a, a one paragraph, simple way to kind of get jump started on your nutrition, right? Um, and if you're not making that the basis of your pyramid, um, all else is gonna kind of be set up to fail, right? So if you are out of shape, if you are overweight, um, if you're not starting there, and you are starting with the gym, we're probably doing it wrong. Um, I would say that nutrition has to be like number one overall. Um, 
and it's just going to be something where if you get better at nutrition, you're going to get better at fitness, right? Um, getting better at fitness doesn't necessarily make you better at nutrition. Um, it's like that original thing we said. So I think that would be like the only thing I would add on that, right? Yeah. Um, the next question is, is it bad for people with past injuries uh, on your joints and stuff like that? Um, this is a great question, um, especially for uh, a crowd of people that are like over uh, the age of 40 or 50 that are starting to run into this stuff. Um, a lot of the times this stuff happens from <clears throat> us not moving for years, right? Um, a lot of the times we're kind of the ones causing our joint pain, right? It's not necessarily like, okay, yeah, maybe it happened in that softball game, but it was like the 20 years of not really doing much before the softball game when it like, uh, like started. Um, so uh, I would say that um, with the scalability of the gym, right? You, it's always really important to learn how to squat without pain, um, whether it's an air squat or not, right? You'll often know how to get off the toilet, um, stuff like that, it's pretty simple. Um, we have to learn how to put our hands over our head. Um, we have to learn how to pick things up off the ground, all basic functions that we're gonna see in our everyday life. Um, if you plan on being active until you're 70, 80 years old um, and quality of life is important to you, I would say absolutely come into the gym, even if your joints are bothering you. Um, we can always sit you down on a box and stand back up and practice squatting that way until we can work something out. Um, and there's always some mobility and stability things that you could work on that would probably fix that. Um, and again, back to diet, right? That's a huge part of kind of the inflammation and all that good stuff with our joints and injuries. And uh, as long as you're communicating with your coach, uh, part of our like process when you first walk in is, do you have any injuries currently? Do you have any past injuries and did you rehab it? Because um, we're huge on all that stuff, right? You have to be very uh, open and honest about that. So we know how to scale you and we know uh, the right and wrong things to do, right? Uh, it's never gonna be the right thing to never do a movement ever again, right? If somebody tells you never to squat again, right? If you thought about never going to the bathroom again, uh, that'd be a wild concept, right? So we do have to practice those things even if it's with no weight. Um, and I would say that a cross gym would probably be like no better place to start, right? Because doing it on your own um, is always harder, like we're saying. Uh, you can't get that really anywhere else for this price. Yeah, it's always, it's kind of weird to me because and I'm sure like people that follow me, we probably follow like similar people, but there's always like this like kind of like preach to like get away from like group fitness or to do things on your own. And like most people that I know, and especially like for me, I don't always want to work out. And like, I don't always want to like push myself, you know? And it's like, I feel like there's no better um, environment than being then showing up and also, you know, when you are part of a CrossFit community and I didn't experience this anywhere else. And like, I said this on Instagram, but like I used to work at Lululemon. We went to all different gyms and tried all different types of modalities, all different types of boutique fitness, like everything. And it didn't matter how many days in a row I would go to a different gym. No one talked to me. No one knew my name. No one like had any like side conversation. And it didn't matter what CrossFit gym we went to, even when we travel, people remember my name at the end of class. They talk to me, they ask me what I do, we catch up when we do come back. And the best part about going to the same CrossFit gym is people ask you where you've been. Like people wonder like if you're gone, whether they message you on Facebook or um, just the next time you come, they're like, where have you been? It's the best feeling because you feel like, oh, I need to like come back here. Like people notice when I don't show up, yeah. you know? And I think it's also like part of that, that, you know, I want to make sure I say is like, I'm motivated when I'm in a group of people, because again, with the different ages and the different fitness levels, it just makes me want to work harder because we're all generally have the same goals and the same why. And it's because we want to be moving and stable and you know, strong when we are 70 plus years old. Um, so that's just a really great feeling about group fitness. If you have any questions for us, obviously. Yeah, I think like closing out on that, if there's anything that we missed uh, to comment, I am an open book with you guys always. Same. And Max is very honest. <laughs> um, we both obviously want the best for everyone and there's a reason why we are very passionate about CrossFit. Um, we see the 
the amazing part of all of it and yeah. we get to see so many different types of people of all different ages walk through these doors every single day and just you know really be a part of something bigger than themselves together every single day for an hour every day and it's just kind of the best feeling um so yeah if you guys like this i mean please as always i love this part like comment subscribe um but it really does support me if you guys share this video um i want this to be a video that shows you guys like you know the different types of people in the same room i want you guys to be able to sit on your couch and watch this video and feel prepared and know when it is your time to go into a crossfit gym and i hope that you guys enjoy it i hope that if you whether you have a good experience bad experience whatever the case just like let me know i would love to know if this video was helpful was helpful for you guys to go and yeah. try crossfit um, yeah definitely yeah. ask away i'd love to hear be able to answer more questions and be a great way to kind of um hopefully clear anything up with anybody has going on, especially if they don't have somebody like us to ask. Yeah. Um, let us be those people, um, kind of ask away. Yeah, if you guys live locally and you want to come try out a class, please come anytime. Um, you don't have to like let us know that you are coming. Just like you can come and you can just show up. It really make sure doesn't you're matter. Like five ten minutes early if you show. Up. Yeah, try and come early <laughs> so we can at least make sure again that you don't have any injuries. We can kind of get to know you a little bit before class to make sure you're perfectly set up. Um, but on that note, I think we're all done. Um, guys, I will see you next Sunday and I hope you guys enjoyed.